Welcome back guys, Automotive Inc. Today we are swapping a starter on a 2009 Subaru Outback. Now this will be similar for a Legacy, uh, an Impreza um, from about 2000 to about 2009 is when they switched in 10. Um, what I will tell you is, is you have to be very specific to your starter no matter if it's a Subaru or anything else. You want to make sure that you get the exact model. Most of the engines are the same unless you have a turbo. Um, but Subaru does differentiate their starters based on a manual or an automatic transmission. So this job is not that intense as long as you have some basic tools, uh, socket sets, some wrenches, and a little bit of patience. All right, guys. Now, if your vehicle battery is charged up and your starter uh, just clicks, um, it could be just a starter solenoid. That is a very inexpensive piece to swap out first. In this case, the starter works fine, but sometimes it kind of hangs up. So that return spring on the starting gear um, is probably just weak. It's the original starter. Now, if you can see your starter and get the exact part number off of it, that'll be the best way. Um, so there's no guessing, uh, because if you go with the one on the Zon, there's many, many different ones. You really got to make sure it's specific. And then when you get it, you're always going to compare it. Now, some auto parts stores, if you want to take it out and you have the ability to take it out and drive it in a different vehicle over, they can they can test it but again because this one's hanging up it's just wearing out um, so it's a good time to actually replace it now before you do anything electrically wise in the engine compartment it's always good to disconnect the uh, the positive cable set it aside I just kind of pinched it below some wiring there to keep it safe now in my experience this is a 10 millimeter to loosen both or one of the terminals and remove it um, so you should be good there if you choose not to and you bump something that could cause a spark so this uh, positive goes down to the starter if you were to touch a ground or the motor i think you're going to cause yourself a lot more issues uh, so just disconnect it set it out of the way um, on this 2009 outback our starters down here it's not too filthy so you can see that little red plate on there is able to uh, clean that off and get the exact part number um, and then you're just going to want some extra lighting in here so First things first, remove that. Also make sure that, or make sure you're pretty sure that the actual starter is the one that you need. Now, we need to disconnect this, so you're gonna wanna pull this little rubber tab back here. Down below that, there is a little two-prong connector. It's just a pull off, so you can pull that off. Now for filming purposes, I did remove the actual um, part of the intake system here. If you decide to do that, it's too, too 10 millimeter bolts that hold that plastic piece in this cover and then there are a couple connections two with little squeeze hose clamps and then this little connection here we're just going to take that off so we can access it better so you can see it all right now you will want to remove this 12 millimeter bolt here and move this line aside again as long as you've disconnected the actual uh, battery then that's good if you have not you cannot let this bump into something guys uh, because it will spark so I still always am careful with that making sure that even though I disconnected that there's nothing down there now these are going to be 14 millimeter bolts they should be pretty tight make sure you have a good grip so you don't round off these bolts um, so we're going to remove these two 14s um, and then before we get going we're going to remove this backside one right here all right, so the back side of here is also 12. Pay attention to this little clip. That needs to be back in that same notch right there uh, when you tighten it up. So just make sure that's good. And you can pull this one aside. Again, as long as you've disconnected your power, you shouldn't have to worry about any arcing, uh, but go ahead and disconnect that before you take your bolts all the way out. And then remember that this bracket's going to come off when you take out your starter. So that needs to be back exactly where it also was so we can reattach that. So once you get all that done, because if you don't do this one and it's super tight, once it's loose, it's gonna be hard to hold the starter and um, remove that 12 mil. So 12 mil here, 12 mil here, 14, 14, okay? All right guys, so the lower bolt itself is a little bit of a pickle to get to. If you have ramps and you can get to, you can definitely get to it underneath. If not, and you remove that little air box, um, you can go from the passenger side and an extension in a, in a 14 and reach it. Now, we here's the old one. Again, this one was not dead dead. 
Um, but we're going to go ahead and just keep this one uh, in the event this one fails. This is probably about a 35, 40 minute job. So if you did have issues, then you could. Now, when you get these out, again, because Subaru is very specific about manual and automatic, you need to make sure that these um, housings are the same size. You probably should count the teeth. So we both have the right teeth. And then we can see that this angle right here uh, is the same on this one. So this is a nine tooth. Um, and I'll put links to this one. Uh, locally, this starter um, was about $230. The cheapest one was about $189. And this one was like 80 bucks on Amazon. And for as far as I can see, I don't see any difference really from OEM. Now, if you do have a local shop that can rebuild your original starter, that is an option. You'd have to just check with them and see what uh, their fee is going to be to tear it down and replace it. So now that we got this one in, you can see my greasy fingerprints because I was counting this. Everything is the same. So now all we got to do is reverse the steps, um, get both of these bolts started, um, and remember to put on all the brackets that you took off. Now it is easier when you come in, you're going to tip it through this backside or underneath it. Um, start this top one. Remember this bracket goes here um, and it needs to be flat. Um, there is kind of a little catch on there. Go ahead and get the, this bolt finger tight all the way in. That'll help line up down there. Now I do hear some people saying that they got the wrong starter and decide to make it work and they're holding out with hose clamps. Um, I would discourage that. I would say while you're in here, get the right one. And really that's why looking at your part number on this one, you can see the part number. Um, I cleaned it off before, took my camera, zoomed way in and got that part number. Because right there, that eliminates really the mistake of having to take this apart and find out the new part that doesn't work. So once we get the, uh, the bottom one basically finger tightened in there, then we're gonna go ahead and tighten those bad boys down. Um, we'll be ready to start reconnecting. One thing I will warn you guys is, is most of the engine components on a Subaru are aluminum, so you do not, uh, these are probably grade uh, A bolts. Um, meaning their steel in the block and the block and everything we're screwing into is the flywheel housing, whatever you want to call it, um, is probably going to be aluminum. So get it tight. No need to over torque because you do not want to snap these bolts off or tear the threads out. So now the new one did come with a new 12 millimeter here. So now that we got it tightened up. We're going to remove that and that's where we'll connect, uh, this lower harness right here. Um, and then this little pin, there is a little pin connector here that we're going to just slide that on and then we'll start reassembling everything. All right, guys, I will tell you that removing this does help with access, but it is completely doable without removing it. But literally it took all of about three minutes to remove that. Again, pretty simple tools. I will, uh, again, if you pause the video, if you need me, now this will work also on an automatic. Uh, the steps will be almost identical. Um, but at the end of the day, that starter will be different. I will link this one below for a lot of people that said that they had a manual, they bought the wrong one off of the Zon. This is specific for that one. Um, and uh, after we get done, reconnect the power, make sure everything's picked up. Don't forget all your lights and stuff that you have hooked places. I've left those in engine compartments on accident before. And it's a good time to go ahead and check the oil and check your fluids, top everything off. And that is how you install a starter on an older Subaru. Guys, I appreciate you guys being here. If you somehow stumbled upon my videos, I do ask that you help a small channel out and hit subscribe, the notification bell, and a thumbs up at the end of the video. It does help me out uh, as we build this channel and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I do appreciate you stopping by and uh, feel free to comment and ask questions. I will try and actually respond. That's one thing on my channel I try and do is respond to questions, um, comments. Uh, sometimes I don't respond to all those because they're good, they're indifferent, they're whatever. But uh, I do appreciate you guys being here. We will see you on the next one.